Well, let's now focus on Australia and Australia, which had done pretty well till now in managing the COVID situation, is facing surges of infections and it's caused by the Delta variant, the variant first identified in India. Now, on the 25th of June, officials had conceded the need to put Sydney into lockdown. But by the following Monday, the crisis became a national one with outbreaks in four states and territories. So you have Sydney, Darwin, Perth, Brisbane, all capital cities under lockdown. More than 20 million Australians, uh, over 70% of the population living under restrictions currently. That's the highest number since a national lockdown at the start of the pandemic. Well, to talk more about the situation in Australia, we're now joined by Professor Nikolai Petrovsky, a College of Medicine and Public Health and Flinders University. Thank you so much, uh, Professor, for joining us. And first and foremost, tell us about uh, how Delta variant is fueling this surge in COVID cases that we're seeing in Australia. So we, we have to realize the Delta variant is very transmissible, uh, much more so than the original strains of the, the virus. And that makes it much harder to control because for every person who gets infected, they're gonna infect between six and eight other people. Whereas the original Wuhan strain, it was only one person infected two other people. So, so obviously in Australia, we're talking about 20 or 30 cases of virus in the country, which listening to your earlier comments about <laughs> India now being down into the tens of thousands of cases, of course, there's no comparison. But, you know, Australia has been very fortunate to be completely free of, of virus uh, now for almost a year and a half. And we haven't had any deaths. So what we're trying to do by this lockdown is is quite different to other places. We, it's not about controlling the virus, it's about eradicating the virus completely out of our community. So they're going in very early, very hard, you know, at a time when we have a handful of cases which other countries would love to, to actually see that few number of cases. But, but here we're really trying to eradicate the virus completely again. No, absolutely. The numbers are, of course, something uh, very, very different from what we're seeing here. It's, as, as you said, handful of cases here and there, but leading to such strict lockdowns. And uh, also uh, at this time, it's the poor vaccine rates that are also being talked about. What, what, if you can tell us a bit more about the vaccination drive there in Australia. So the, the, the problem with, with vaccination in Australia, um, you know, is that it's been an on, on-off campaign. I think the, the government have given out mixed messages about we only have two vaccines here, one the AstraZeneca, which as you know, uh, has been problematic with, with safety issues. Uh, and then we have the Pfizer vaccine, uh, which has been quite limited in supply because they're trying to supply, you know, many different countries around the world. So we only get a small drip of that in Australia. So the, the vaccine rollout has been problematic. Um, and, uh, you know, but we are up to, I think, 20% of the population now having at least one dose of vaccine. Uh, we have a long way to go, but, but we are getting there. But fortunately, as I say, we, we haven't been under pressure because we haven't had any deaths now for over a year from COVID. So, you know, we've been the lucky country, you know, once again, uh, and, and not because necessarily of good policy, but uh, we, we have managed to keep the virus at bay. Right. And even now, uh, with uh, over 70 percent of the population under lockdown, it's just a handful of cases that we're talking about and a few surges here and there. Uh, you were recently involved in a study that uh, found that the COVID virus is most ideally adapted to infect human cells. If you could tell us a bit about that as well. Yes, yeah, so this goes back to our research using supercomputers uh, very early last year when we were trying to understand where the, the virus had come from. At that time, uh, obviously, it seemed to just come out of nowhere in Wuhan in China. And so we were trying to identify what animal host this virus may have come from before it came to humans. And the surprising finding of our study was that um, in fact, it looked like the virus had come from humans um, or human cells, at least, because it was most adapted to infect humans. Uh, and that didn't seem to make a lot of sense because, you know, everyone was presuming this had come from some wild animal, whereas our data suggested maybe that wasn't the case. And of course, the other possibility uh, was that this may have been 
you know, a virus that leaked out of a laboratory uh, in, in Wuhan. And, and certainly our modeling data, you know, could support that possibility. Although, of course, we really still don't know where this virus came from. All right, uh, Professor Nikolai, I suppose I'll have to have you on for a separate discussion all uh, on that study. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, from Australia.